Let's go through the book list real quick. I'm going to put these books out here. And when you guys are working in your groups on your planning um, in a few minutes, then we're going to, well, these will be available. So you can even ask about other um, topic items. And I can pull books because all my books are back there or in my office. So I have them in both places. I do. Um, so I noticed that one group was doing something about weather or dressing appropriately for the younger kids, and that may have been the group yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday. But for those of you doing weather, I have a snow theme, which is, which is good for New England, um, especially with our last winter still fresh in our memories because you just ended school yesterday because of all your snow days. The story of snow. This one is, um, the story of snow is cool because it has the actual pictographs of snowflakes. Um, Over and Under the Snow is more of a narrative um, text and that's a really good book. Mother's Journey is about the uh, emperor penguins Young, young reader is too hot, too cold. Uh, keep your body temperature just right. So it ties into that earlier grades, the old Connecticut framework, kindergarten standard. Snowflake, a water cycle story. Snow school and a face-to-face -face book of National Geographic penguins. So that's my, that's my snow set. Food and nutrition, I noticed one group was doing um, something on nutrition and um, I think nutrition and gardens was the theme. So how did that get in my lunchbox is one book. Planting the wild garden, it's our garden and yummy good food makes me strong. So of course younger grades but that's okay because that's where that's that's where that's covered. So, some are younger. Um, camouflage. For some reason, camouflage was a big thing in, as far as a few years ago. Um, where in the Wild and What in the Wild are great books for camouflage. These are really cool because on one page, you have the picture and the kid has to find the creature and you've got the text. And then on the, let's see, it says, can you find, oh, let's just go here. This one, lift to find the creature, and it's highlighted. And so, where in the wild was the first one, what in the wild was the second one? And then the latest one was hide and seek camouflage animals. And this is all under the sea. <coughs> Excuse me, something has me going today. I think well, it's all the stuff they've got kicked up over there. Well, while you're getting your throat together, <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> on Science Friday, yes. they're doing something, Cephalopod Week, and uh, there's a video that's available about uh, octopuses and octopi, whatever, <laughs> and they, uh, there's a lesson plan that's sort of an integrated art okay. science lesson plan. Not okay. an overly inquiry lesson plan, but the video of the octopus was interesting and they talked about features of camouflage, color, pattern, shape, and texture. Okay. So some that made sense and certainly crossed the visual arts and okay and then i have a link because these are my habitat books but i happen to have i picked oceans as one of the habitats and i have a lot of stuff on oceans so national geographic kids oceans the best book of sharks fabulous fishes at the seafloor cafe Odd Ocean Critter Poems, About Habitats book, which is on oceans, and Life in an Ocean. This is the story of oceanographer Sylvia Earle. So that's kind of cool. 
And there's one that I have of Jacques Cousteau. That was a really cool book, but I think it might be in my office. And Habitat, I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's a it's more of a children's book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, might it might be, it might not be. I don't know. It's it's really French looking, artistic. Might be. Um, then as far as the other Habitat books, Citizen Scientist, which is another Laurie Griffin Burns book. Um. That's be a part of scientific discovery from your own backyard. Cycles of Nature. This is an introduction to biological rhythms. Monarch and milkweed. A dragonfly's life. And then you have Animal Tracks and Signs, which is one of the Net Geo books um, that's pretty typical for a DK and Net Geo, all the information books. Nature's Patchwork Quilt. Uh, tracks, scats, and signs. I used to go out to the woods and do an environmental education program, and the guy who always did it would put raised nets down. He would look down, and they'd find deer poop, and then he'd go over to the next little pile where were his raised nets, and he'd pick it up and eat it. And the kids would freak out every time. He's like, I'm just pulling your nets. Wildflowers, Blooms, and Blossoms is another one of these take-along guides. Butternut Hollow Pond. This And these are two of my absolute favorites. Nature in the Neighborhood and uh, Forest Explorer Full-Size Guide. This one is a Nick Bishop book, and if you're familiar with Nick Bishop at all, he is the most fabulous photographer, and everything in here is life-size. What's the name of that one? Forest, Forest Explorer, a life-size field guide, and it's by Nick N.I.C. Bishop. So you have a page that actually describes everything that you see on the double-page spread before, and what he does is a montage of all the critters together. So you can see the differences in sizes and everything. So he does a really good job on all of his books. Let's see, this is birds. The Old Lady and the Birds. So that's one that's a little bit more of a uh, fiction text. This one's really cool. Birds of a Feather. It's huge. And it's a, it's a, um, an engineer book. So it's got your flip ups for all the different eggs. And this one has the it has the different one different different flip chart pieces. This is um, Patel and Gervais, but this was a winner, so it's the only reason I would have bought it. We'll post the list online too. Yeah, this this list will be online. I'm going to work on it again tomorrow, and then um, what I've done is I've linked all the NSTA trade books to the standards. They've all got the Fog and the Flash Kincaid, which the NSTA list does not, and um, I'll do the um, connections to the Spanish books. So I've got some things to add to it tomorrow. Um, and then what bluebirds do, and that's a bird god of North America. The boy who drew birds is the Audubon story, and this is, a, this is one that won feathers, not just for flying, which is really cool because Melissa Stewart is one of the most amazing authors to talk to because of the research that she does. Um, and... Her books, when they finally get to publication, she's probably edited the books a hundred times. So it takes a lot of work to finally get published. She's got a great website for nonfiction writing. Yeah, her, her website's great. Melissa Stewart. And, and I think she's it's just MelissaStewart.com. Yeah. 
Yeah. And she does school visits. She does school visits. S T E W A R T. All right, and these are trees. So if you're doing a unit and thinking about trees, Ellie's log. And this is exploring the forest where the great trees fell. This is a really cool one because this is the plants of the Lewis and Clark Trail. So if you're covering Lewis and Clark and American Explorers, then you can bring the science into the social studies. Bless you. And one small place in a tree, and this one is a fabulous book because it starts with a tree falling and then follows all the critters that take up in that tree as it's rotting. What's the name of that one? Uh, one Small Place in a Tree. And then, of course, the DK Tree Book. And this one is a really cool one. That is Amazing Numbers in Animal Lives. This is a math book. This is one of the two that's probably the closest connection to math. So this one has all the different numbers associated with uh, just various animals. So every double page spread may be a different animal. No Monkeys, No Chocolate, another Melissa Stewart book. This one is about how um, it takes monkeys to create chocolate. So it's kind of that cycle of life type of thing. And then we have another one of those um, Take Along Guides, The Trees, Leaves, and Bark. All right, and then bees. For some reason, bees were really big for a few years. And these are just a few of my bee books. Um, the Hive Detective, which is another Lori Griffith Burns book. Here's the second math book is the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, growing patterns, Fibonacci numbers in nature. Honey in a Hive. Honeybees, Letters from the Hive, The History of Bees and Honey, and Flight of the Honeybee. So, lots of, lots of books on bees. Is the Fibonacci book just bees? No, it's, it's, it's everything in nature. Animals. <laughs> and I know that's kind of a broad category, but these are broad books. So, Animal Grossopedia. So, your boys will love it. The Beetle Book by Steve Jenkins. I don't know if any of you are, you've, you've got to have read at least one Steve Jenkins book in your lifetime. And remember, he's the one who's the great paper artist. And so, his art continues in this book. And his website is fabulous. Uh, one of these animal books is actually Steve Jenkins, right? I think, yeah. This is the new one, Steve Jenkins, J-E-N-K-I-N-S. And he also did the animal book. This was a winner this year. And, um, he, and he did the paper art. And there's a website where you can see him creating some of the animals in the book. But this is, this is one of those that's kind of a, um, an encyclopedia type of a book. Then we have the Nat Geo Wild Animal Atlas, the Supernature Encyclopedia, Champions of Wild Animals, which is about the Earth Heroes. It's a part of the Earth Heroes um, series. Biomimicry, which is kind of cool. It's inventions inspired by nature. Biomimicry. Mm -hmm. And what if you had animal teeth? This is a Sandra Markle book that came out this past year. And it's, it's really cute. It's a scholastic book, and I think it's like under six bucks. Um, then here's the Smithsonian animal book, and both the Steve Jenkins animal encyclopedia. And this one, we're on the same list, and they always show photos. Well, both of them are named Animal. You can see my confusion, because they're both white. 
and they both look kind of similar. I was so confused when I was looking at that list going, well, they put the same book twice. <laughs> and I'm looking, and I'm like, different authors. That's weird. And then finally look more closely at the um, covers. <coughs> so there's animals. And let's see. Oh, I put those over here, so I'll move them. And poetry. So we already had the one uh, poetry book thrown in one of these stacks. And then Songs of the Water Boatman is a really good one. And Swirl by Swirl and Butterfly Eyes, which are other books by Joyce Sidman. So the one that you looked at earlier, the uh, Dark Emperor, and then these two. And then there's one called Poetries by Douglas Florian. And it's actually a really cool book because it opens the opposite way that you think. So... All right, so these are here. So when you're working, if you if you want to just take a pile that might fit your um, your work, that's fine. If you have other things that you're doing, just ask because I may have books related to.